but we're right here in Klangenfurt, Austria, where behind me, NT Systems is performing an electric boat conversion for a customer. Let's go check it out. NT Systems is a company based in Kran, Slovenia, and they happen to be about a one hour drive over the mountains to this customer location in Austria. So this boat behind me is a Pedrazini sport yacht that they've just converted to electric. Let's take a look. This is Nates. He's one of the founders of NT Systems, along with his partner, Tomas. And we're here today so he can make some final adjustments to the install and also so we can do some filming and check out his conversion. He made some adjustments to the motor mounts to ensure the shaft is aligned properly. The customer is using a prototype high voltage battery that they asked us not to show in the video. So they've designed a modular inboard that can basically be dropped into the boat in one piece. Yeah, <clears throat> the motor is um, actually the whole propulsion system uh, because we integrated the motor with the controller, uh, the heat exchangers, the external and the internal um, cooling pumps. Uh, you can see also the water strainer, uh, the low voltage and high voltage connections. So it's actually a full system. Uh, the size of it, the power uh, output of the motor is 160 kilowatts and the, the weight of the motor is approximately 100 kilos uh, and the length uh, around 66 centimeters. So it's a really compact unit and it's perfect for such a small boat. Um, and it's also um, marinized because you can see at the output of the motor we have a direct connection to the shaft to the propeller uh, which means that uh, you can drive directly without any external thrust bearing because the thrust bearing itself is integrated into the motor the motor cover pops on and off with magnetic clips so it's really easy to take on and off for maintenance Nates is going to take us through all the components for this install, which actually ends up not being that much. So um, on the motor itself, you can see there's only a seawater connection, a low voltage, uh, 12 volt connection for auxiliary um, uh, power supply for the pumps inside and communication and high voltage battery connection. So that's everything uh, which regards the motor. Uh, then uh, if we see all uh, the rest of installation in the boat, it's actually here in this area. Um, here is DC-DC converter to convert the power from high voltage battery to 12 volt battery, which you need for um, using the boat. Uh, so it's like an alternator. Um, this is onboard charger, so charger from a short power to a high voltage battery. Uh, they also have their own cooling um, circle uh, because it's water cooled unit. The uh, charger is 22 kilowatts uh, of output power, so it needs water cool cooling. Um, at this side, uh, you can see 12 volt battery and 12 volt distribution box. And that's actually everything uh, which is also a part of a boat, not only a propulsion. So like wipers, horn, uh, searchlight, uh, um, navigation lights, bilge pump and so on. So uh, in the front, you have also a short power connection for charging the battery. And that's, that's it. That's the whole uh, installation. Basically, the whole components of the system are the high voltage battery, the motor with integrated cooling system and controller, the DC to DC converter, which functions like an alternator, the 12 volt battery and 12 volt distribution box, the high voltage onboard charger, 
which receives power from shore, the throttle lever, and the integrated display screen. And that's it. During this install, they also managed to integrate the old switches from the boat into the build. We can turn it on with this one, but only one is the main switch, the other are for other consumers on the boat, which like is... A, or, uh, like navigation lights. Like navigation lights, a wiper, a uh, bilge pump, and so on. They also ended up developing their own throttle lever with an RFID keycard. Uh, their display screen shows the usual system and trip information, but one of my favorite features is that it actually has a maintenance section built right into it with the schedule. So it uh, automatically pops up the notification on the screen if, um, if one task is due. So We're hearing from some electric boat companies that electric boats require no maintenance, but this is what Nate's had to say. It's of course not true. Um, it's a lot less maintenance than in diesel propulsion or electric or, or uh, gasoline other alternative but there is maintenance of course i also asked him what the customer saw in their motor package that made them choose them for their installation decided for our motor is the compactness of a motor because this boat doesn't have a lot of space from the point where the shaft comes into the boat to end of uh, engine room so it's it's quite forward uh isn't it where the shaft comes to the boat and then you have a sort of bulkhead yeah right there, there, there that's a bulkhead quite quite close to that so what's the biggest challenge when retrofitting an old boat like this so the biggest challenge is to keep um original as much as possible mm -hmm. to, to keep the steering wheel switches uh, and also the useful space uh, so with adding the battery in the and the motor and the battery and all the, the chargers inside the boat, we should not um, reduce the useful space for the owner. So that was, let's say, the biggest challenge. So you, you've you done a number of installs on new builds. Yeah. So how did you like, how did you like working with these old boats um, in terms of the retrofit? Yeah, it's um, a little bit different because uh, it's, at least uh, this project was one off so it's different mm -hmm. it's new project new challenge and that's why it's more interesting yeah than than if you are in production line and building your uh, a lot of same boats and of course technically it was a little bit different because currently we we work on a plastic boat yes uh, and this is wood so it's this is the first time you've uh, done an install on a wooden boat. Yeah. yeah. A couple of weeks after I left, Nate's and the NT Systems team, along with the client, took the boat out for its first sea trip. The cooling is good. <laughs> the cooling is really good. When Nate's first told me about this project, I thought it was really fascinating. But after seeing it in person, I was really struck by what was happening right in front of me. Taking an old, beautiful boat, removing the oily, smoky, and complex motor, and replacing it with a clean, simple, emissions-free system with few moving parts. There's now so much available space in the old engine bay. And with the conversion process itself, Nates and his team were able to use the old helm switches to power the boat on and off. The charge ports are hidden under the dash, and so the only indication that it's electric is the lack of noise, smoke, and smell when it's operating. Now this boat, hand-built out of wood in the 1970s and 
has been given a new life and will be enjoyed by friends and families out on the fresh air and sunshine of these pristine mountain lakes for many years to come. I'm Justin with Aqua Electric. Thanks for checking out this cool project. See you next time.